Welcome to the Backdoor Fantasy Sports Podcast with Russo and Jordy. What's up, guys? It's Russo and Jordy, Backdoor Fantasy Sports, and uh, this is our waiver wire show. We actually have a lot to cover today. Um, there are some, I, I mean, if your redraft league is anything like one of my redraft leagues, there is a lot out there. We're going to break it all down for you. We've got a lot of news going on around the league. Um, before we break everything down, though, um, we want to shout out our new partner, Parlay Play. If you guys like DFS, you've got to check out Parlay Play. Uh, they have the best lines around. We have been loving it. We just partnered with them like two days ago, three days ago. I think this is our third day. Um, but all you have to do is use code BACKDOOR and you'll get 100% deposit match up to $100 and a $5 promo play. So um, trust me when I say they've got the best lines in the business. We've been loving it. Um, also got a shout out Underdog. Um, we love them as well. Code BACKDOOR for Underdog. Uh, you will get up to 1000 in bonus cash uh, plus a free pick to help you cash your first slip. We have a link in the description for both of those if you guys want to check that out along with all of our other partners. But let's break right into this news. So um, you want to start, what do you want to start with, Anthony Richardson? Or... Yeah, that's a hot topic. Yeah. He's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, and I, I, you know, I've been riding this out in Dynasty, uh, drafted him uh, in our rookie draft. And um, I've been holding out hope. I sat, you know, sat through the whole like uh, injured all of last year, comes back, looks like trash so far. Uh, his passer rating uh, so far is 44%, um, which is like the worst since like the year 2000 or something like that. Um, but then uh, he's got this play when they're literally trying to make a run uh, to come back and, and win this game. And uh, he checks himself out after a run. And I thought, like, what's going on? Is he hurt? And then we find out later that it was because he said he was tired, which did not go over well. No. He made the decision really easy for uh, for Shane Steichen and the Colts. Like, it, I mean, Flacco looks way better. So I think this is the best thing for him personally. I, I've been saying it uh, just in our small talk that I think Richardson needs to sit on the bench watch the way Flacco works, sit behind a, a pro, you know, Hall of Famer and um, develop through this year. And uh, yeah, unfortunate if you were hoping Anthony Richardson was going to have a breakout year. I think he stays on the bench the rest of the year because Flacco's going to ball, I think. <laughs> so yeah, that was really dumb, man. You can't, you're the leader of the team. You're setting the the example for the entire team and you know, whether or not that's fair, it doesn't matter. That's just how the position's been since the beginning of the sport. And uh, people are trusting you and leaning on you to, like, lead them, you know. So you're tapping out because you're tired and you're not hurt. That was just uh, – that was the nail in the coffin for that offense. And, yeah, I think Flacco looked better anyway. So I think we were Way both better. like, all right, it makes more sense for Flacco right now. I mean, look at Jordan Love. You let your guy – cook behind you know a veteran who knows what he's doing and they kind of get to learn from him a little bit whether or not I mean it's up to Anthony Richardson whether or not he wants to you know drop the ego and actually learn and uh you know respect what Flacco is doing I think he will but uh you never know you know some guys have pretty big egos and you just you never know but we'll just have to see how it plays out but really excited for all things fantasy for Flacco and I'm a huge Joe Flacco fan so I'm really excited to see uh what he can cook up with that offense yeah, this is great news for Pittman and Downs and oh, yeah. um, Alec Pierce. Yeah, like ev all the pass catchers, this is a huge upgrade because they're going to actually be getting more targets now and good targets. And I think this is even going to be solid for uh, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, you don't have the RPO anymore, but you're going to have a lot more op uh, opportunities for touchdowns. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, this makes sense. Uh, this is what Anthony Richardson needs. He probably needed this even without checking himself out, but that just gave them, uh, that probably was a deciding factor. If he's been playing good all year and he does that, that, that this is probably not the discussion, but I think that uh, this was probably something in the back of their minds uh, even before he checked himself out. And then in that situation, it's kind of like, okay, guys, like we got to do something. Yeah. Um, so... Stefan Diggs out for the year, torn ACL. Yep. Un unfortunate, uh, obviously. Um, that's more like, 
an announcement. If you if you guys haven't heard, there's not really a whole lot to talk about there. He's done for the season. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get into the fantasy implications when we get to the waiver wire portion because, uh, you know, Mechie and some of these guys are are worth uh, swinging, swinging on, especially. Um, and I mean, obviously, Nico Collins, when he gets back, it's it's going to be lights out. Yep. Um, but did you have anything else to say about Diggs? No, nah, man, it just sucks. We... You know, it's just another big name down for the year. It's horrible. Yeah, man. Um, and then uh, Deontay Johnson traded to the Ravens. Yeah, this so. is an exciting one. I mean, we'll see. I have Deontay Johnson in fantasy. I traded for him. Um, we'll see how it pans out. You know, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I think it'll be good. I think he'll be like their short yardage reception guy where he's just kind of eating up the field and opening things up for everyone else. So whether or not it's an upgrade from him playing with Andy Dalton in the usage he's getting, that's something me and you were discussing. Like we don't know yet. Um, hopefully him and Lamar just get off to a red hot start and he's like a five to six reception guy a week. That would be the best case scenario, but uh worst case scenario, we see him fill in and just do like the, the two to three reception stuff, you know, and just not be very productive, but just be another part of this offense that they can use. But the way Lamar has been opening up lately and getting through his reads better and getting, you know, people like Rashad Bateman involved. Um, I'm pretty optimistic about it, but We'll just have to see because he is still banged up. So we got to remember that. Yeah. And then you've got Mark Andrews has been getting more involved. Um, Zay Flowers is going to get his Rashad Bateman, like we said, is, has been emerging. So it could. But at the same time, Andy Dalton's been out. So yeah. if um, so, it's hard to say with the situation in Carolina. But this feels like um, this feels like basically like a sideways move to me with really good upside because he could like if they like why are they trading for him he just locked in a contract you know so they're not going and getting him you would think to be um Nelson Aguilar yeah yeah so so there is like huge upside here could be end up being a huge upgrade could also be like okay this pass catch the, the pass catchers on uh the Ravens it's a little crowded now so We'll see how this plays out. Um, I think it'll stay relatively the same for him. I think we'll get the same usage out of him. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start breaking down Sunday. Enjoy sports betting and daily fantasy? Well, Daily Grind is here to help you beat the books. They make premium DFS tools that do all the work for you. Comparing lines across just about every platform. Looking for discrepancies for you to take advantage of. Start off your research with their DFS Optimizer, a tool that finds all the best plays and rates them with their odds to hit indicator. Or if you'd rather have them make your entire slip for you, they have you covered with their AI slip generator. They'll even notify you when a new slip is available. Go to dgfantasy.com and use code BACKDOOR. They will give you 25% off your first subscription all the way up to a year if you want. That's dgfantasy.com, code backdoor. Sweet. Uh, we can start with Bengals versus Eagles. Eagles get it done 37 to 17. Um, just easy peasy. Um, uh, after uh, the Bengals started off hot, you know, uh, first quarter, 7 to 0. And then adjustments were made. Uh, you know, 10 to three Eagles in the second quarter, 14 to seven, 13 to zero, uh, as far as third and fourth quarter. Uh, let's see. Jalen hurts. He was, um, my God, yeah, he vultured he, uh, all day long, vultured man. three rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown, all three on the one yard line. Uh, Oh yeah. We hope that's not a, a thing moving forward because that's what we were worried about with uh, Saquon coming into this year. And then up until now, it's been like, yeah, that's not an issue. Well, the problem is Saquon wants it. He's like, he is all about like, he was talking about it. He's like, why not have the guy who can squat 600 pounds hold the ball and the guy who can squat 550 pushing him from behind? So he's like all about pushing Jalen Hurts into the end zone. You can see how hyped up he gets every time he does it. And I'm just sitting over here like, bro, like, come on. You did all that work to get down there. Now you're just giving him the ball. But I get it. It's unstoppable. 
but man, it really sucks. You know, uh, luckily he still put up a monster game, 22 carries, 108 yards. Um, you know, I think he had a one reception for a couple of yards, but, um, it, it really, it sucks for fantasy implications, but, uh, hopefully it doesn't last much longer than they, uh, you know, I think it'll pre- be a pretty regular yeah. thing. But... At least just share the love a little bit. Be nice. Yeah, it's a little crazy to just be giving up all the touchdowns to your quarterback, but it is what it is. It yeah. is impossible to stop, so why would they quit doing it? It was a wild week for tight ends on National Tight End uh, Nation- National Tight Ends Day. Yep. Um, did uh, let's see. So. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Goddard must have been out this week. He's got uh, no yeah. re- no receptions. Yeah, I see Stoll. Um, and then uh, Mike Gesicki, decent outing. Seven receptions, 73 yards, no touchdowns. Um, Jamar Chase, nine receptions, 54 yards and a touchdown. Um, yeah. Uh, looks like he was in. He just was targeted one time. Goddard? Yeah. Oh, no love on National Tight End Day. That sucks. That sucks. All right. Um, Ravens, Browns. Browns, get it done. Jameis Winston looked great. <laughs> I love this guy love so it. much, man. The, Me too. The whole he goes, pregame uh, interview is so funny. <laughs> yeah, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's like, I love it, I love it too. Oh man, he was feeling it. Uh, 27 of 41, 334 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, just diced them up. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb, 16 carries, 52 yards. Uh, Cedric Tillman, seven receptions, 99 yards, two touchdowns. Elijah Moore, he was just hitting everybody. Elijah Moore, eight receptions, 85 yards. Jerry Judy, five receptions, 79 yards. David Njoku, five receptions, 61 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, this offense what is an, alive now. What an outing. That's so awesome. Um, and then we got uh, on the opposite side, Zay Flowers goes for seven receptions, 115 yards, uh, 12 targets. So he um, he definitely he seemed good to go. Uh, Rashad Bateman won uh, one reception for 28 yards on uh, five targets. Um, yeah, he had two drops too that were pretty costly. Okay. Uh, Der- Derrick Henry, 11 carries, 73 yards and a touchdown. Um, yeah. So Lamar had a clean game, you know, like uh, two, 289, two touchdowns, and yeah. then uh, eight rush attempts for 46 yards. Um. Yeah, this was like a fun game. It was really close. Yeah, it was. It was a great game. I mean, that last drive by Jameis to get them up was just bananas, man. I mean, he is playing so good. It's crazy. Like, just to go down there against one of the best defenses and just pick them apart like that and get into the end zone again was really cool. Yeah, man. Um, And obviously, uh, he him being the starter now is so good for all their pass catchers like we talked about last week. Um that this is going to upgrade them quite a bit. Uh, Lions versus Titans. This I, at first, you know, at the start of this, I was like, "Wow, the Titans went right out there and and uh, <laughs> went and got a touchdown." Yeah. You know, and seven seven to fourteen, Lions went up uh, in the first, and then um, then things got ugly. Uh, ended up losing the game fifty two to fourteen. <laughs> That's so the Lions. It's crazy. 52 to 14. Jared Goff, 12 of 15 for 85 yards yeah, and three, three touchdowns. touchdowns. There was six different people who scored touchdowns on this offense. Jameer Gibbs, David, Mon- David Montgomery, Sam Laporta, Khalif Raymond, Brock Wright, and Almond Ross St. Brown. David Montgomery had a passing touchdown too. Oh my God. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that's wild. One he went one for one for three yards and a passing touchdown. Um yeah, just a, a wild outing. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs went nuts, eleven carries, one twenty seven and a touchdown. Um and then uh Khalif Raymond he he got some on special teams, right? And through the air. I think he scored. Yeah, he did, didn't he? he yeah. Did, he scored a punt return for a touchdown. He had 190 and, yards in punt returns. That is crazy. 
for a touchdown, yeah. and then he scored a receiving touchdown as well. Big day for him. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's see. Calvin Ridley looked great. That he was the whole offense. Ten receptions, 143 yards, no touchdowns, but 15 targets. Like uh, this is what we were hoping for, you know. So maybe with um, DeAndre Hopkins gone, maybe. Calvin Ridley can get back to being an every week uh, high end wide receiver two, you know, wide receiver one. That would be awesome. Um, I know I've got him in a couple leagues. I've just been waiting it out, like frustrate, like frustration has been there. But, um, but I've just been hanging on because I'm like, I'm not going to drop him, and I'm not going to get anything for him in a trade. So he's just been sitting on my bench. But yeah, maybe this is uh, going to pop off again. Um, Tony Pollard, twenty carries, ninety four yards. Um, yeah. Mason Rudolph, 22 of 38, 266, one touchdown, two interceptions. Yeah, it was just a dominant, dominant performance by the Lions offense and defense. Um, you know, the we were sitting here thinking the Broncos were going to be the start of the week for the defense and thinking that uh, the Titans, like at first it looked like we were kind of going to be right because the Titans went out there and scored twice. And uh, mm -hmm. the first two drives they had with looked great. I mean, they really did. They they went out there and ran the ball at will and did what they needed to do, and then it just got ugly. And they kept getting deeper and deeper into this hole, and Mason Rudolph started turning back into himself a little bit and throwing picks and stuff, and it just got ugly really quick. So, you know, yeah, Rudolph also Lions stuff. Yeah, DraftKings had the number one on the week yeah. uh, coming into this week. Uh, Mason Rudolph also had four carries for 29 yards and a touchdown. So yeah. he actually had a decent fantasy week. For sure. All right. Uh, Cardinals, Dolphins. The Cardinals get it done the very last second, which That's is awesome. Yeah. yeah, they're at the top of the NFC West now. This is like such a battle in the NFC West. Um, Kyler Murray, 26 for 36. Uh, 307 yards, two touch, <clears throat> excuse me, two touchdowns. James Conner, 20 carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. Um, Trey McBride went off, nine receptions, 124 yards on 11 targets. Marvin Harrison Jr. had a day, six receptions, 111 yards and a touchdown. Michael Wilson got in the end zone. Um, yeah, and uh, Tyreek was at least not terrible. Um, yeah. So they do look way better with Tua, obviously. So that was good to see. Uh, Tua, 28 of 38, 234, one touchdown. Man, there's not many running backs like Devon Achan, though. Like 10 carries for 97 yards. The dude's just so electric. But uh, yes. I have nothing bad to say about the, the Cardinals this week. Honestly, like they played a really tough game. Um, all of their defensive players stepped up. I don't know if you've like been paying attention to this kid, but this Kaiser White for the Cardinals on defense is a absolute baller. Like this dude, um, he had six solo tackles in this game, and he's just like he's their their linebacker. Um, I think they they traded is for him rookie? somewhere. I don't know. He's twenty eight years old, so I don't think so. But no, um, he wouldn't be a rookie. Man, he is really. Good. This is his third year. Um, he was hurt last year, but already this year, man, he's just like looked dominant and there was a lot of big tackles he had in that game. So I just, it kind of, he kind of stuck out to me, but honestly, like Kyler Murray looked fantastic in this game. Um, not much bad to say at all from the Cardinals side. Um, Dolphins, Tua, he looks good too. I mean, he, um, they're definitely starting out a little slow. I think everyone was happy to see him slide on that big run he had. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like, get down, but uh, he's, it looks like he's trying to take care of himself a little bit more, keep himself out of harm's way. So that was nice. Um, I think he, yeah, he had three rush attempts for 13 yards, not anything crazy, but the offense just looked more dynamic again. I mean, they had, uh, you know, they got Jalen Waddle involved. Jalen Waddle had a really big drop in this game. Um, it hit him right between the numbers and he would have just walked into the end zone with that. So he could have had a way bigger game had he caught that ball and went in. But, um, yeah, it was a fun game. Really, there was a lot of crazy games on. I mean, every it seemed like as soon as Scott Hansen said the witching hour started, like there was like eight games that were just intense end of the game battles, and yeah. uh, it was it was a really fun day for football. I was I was just geeking the whole time. 
Absolutely. And Achan on top of the 10 carries for 97 yards also had six receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown. Just like yeah. you got to love it, especially yeah. full PPR. That's a monster day. So, yeah. so yeah, really stoked to see the Cardinals get that win though. Absolutely. Um, Jets Patriots. <laughs> oh my God. This is wow. just insanely depressing. If you're a Jets fan. They uh, lose Drake may early in the game and go and win this game with Jacoby Brissett. And I think they would have gotten um, blown out if Drake May had kept playing because he was, like, playing really, really well. Um, you know, Brissett came in and did what he needed to do. It wasn't an impressive game, in my opinion, from Brissett. Uh, 15 for 24 for only 132 yards. But Drake May, in, like, the couple little snaps he had, he went 3 for 6 for 23 yards, but he had three rush attempts for 46 yards and a rushing touchdown. Like, that kid looks really, really dicey. When it comes to like, I think, you know, he's like Drew Locke where he's got both things going for him. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was a freaking awesome performance from the Patriots defense too. They really kept the Jets in check. Aaron Rodgers looking a little bit old to me. Um, You know, I don't, I just don't even know where you start with the Jets. Like, how can you not win this game? You have Hassan Reddick back. He played and you still go out and lose this game to like the worst team in the league right now. It's just crazy. Yeah, and Rodgers, with his attempts, it didn't actually look bad. 17 of 28, 233, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Brees Hall, 16 carries for 80 yards. Braylon Allen, 12 carries, 32 yards and a touchdown. Garrett Wilson had a good game. Five receptions, 113 yards. Um, Conklin got in the end zone. And uh, Xavier Gibson. But, I mean... I'm guessing it was just the Jets defense. Like, I mean, allow, sure. allowing yeah. them to, I mean, this is a really close game though. And the Jets got the ball back twice with like a chance to go win the game. And they just could, could not come up with anything. And it's like, I don't know if the Patriots are just locking in a little bit more. I know their defense is getting healthier, but um, you know, Christian Gonzalez is locked down corner. Like this kid is really, really good. Um, so he made it really tough for Devonte to get involved too much. Um, he only had four receptions for 54 yards, you know, keeping Devonte Adams in check at all is a good thing, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It just, uh, it was a really rough outing for the jets. Cause I mean, the yeah. run game wasn't too much of a factor. Uh, Ramondre yeah. only had 20 carries for 48 yards. He had two touchdowns, but they were getting up there with these little dink and dime passes. So. Really interesting game. I don't really even really know how to dissect that one because it looked like the Jets were playing to their full potential. They just couldn't get it done. All right. Well, Falcons, Buccaneers, close one. Um, by the way, I don't know if this happened to you guys, but I, I had an incredible stat correction for Bijan Robinson this week. Um, you got it from? Yeah, nice. I was. I had lost this game. I was up by like twenty, like twenty six points and change in my dynasty league, and it was over. And I was just like, the dude had Kittle that I was playing against. Kittle goes off for like twenty seven points. It's full PPR in our league, and I lost by less than a point. It was like point six, and I just had to sit for twenty four hours and just take that beating. <laughs> And I was so frustrated because I put up 152 points and uh, I really needed the win. And then 24 hours later, or it wasn't even, it was uh, like 12 I hours. Think, yeah, it was like, anyways, I, I go and look and I'm refreshing sleeper and it says I have 153 points and I had won. <laughs> and I was like, and I had made a joke like about stat correction, you know, and yeah, it turns out they accidentally gave Darnell Mooney one of the receptions that was Bijan Robinson. So he got the full point for the reception, and it was like a six yard uh, run. So I ended up winning by like just over a point, I think. That's so crazy. if your if your fantasy football line changed, it's because Bijan got awarded that like uh, the next day. Um, but Baker Mayfield, uh, two interceptions, but. He still was, I mean, gosh, Kate Otten. That was my start of the week at tight end last week. He looked great. Or maybe I went with Njoku. I don't remember. Um, but 
man, 37 of 50 attempts, 330 yards, three touchdowns. Um, the two interceptions sucks, but he's literally Brett Favre, like to the utmost degree. Like this guy, he's an absolute baller gunslinger, but he's going to throw interceptions. That's just what he is. I mean, he's, you know, to me, he's just like, I think he's almost identical to what Brett Favre was in his prime. He's like, I posted this on X the other day and I'm sure a lot of people did, but through eight weeks, he has over 2,300 total yards and 23 touchdowns. Like he is just on pace to have a monster year. And I've got him in dynasty, which is why I'm okay with the situation with Anthony Richardson, because I've got someone who, you know, I'd be really frustrated, obviously, if I didn't have someone I could rely on, but he's the QB two on the year. Um, but yeah, Bijan is looking better every week. Uh, 13 carries, 63 yards, uh, no touchdowns on the ground. Did he get, I think he got one through the air though. Um, yeah, seven receptions, 43 yards and a touchdown. So solid outing for Bijan. Kyle Pitts, great day, four receptions. Although that was BS. This game, honestly, the Buccaneers got robbed here because Kyle Pitts did get stripped. Yeah. going into the end zone like that that uh he should have one touchdown i don't like, understand um, why they didn't show the pylon cam like they they have the pylon cam for a reason there's one right next to where he's running in they don't even look at it and you can it was clearly close, tell but yeah. yeah you can clearly but yeah, tell the ball's got, moving yeah right before and uh i hate stuff like that last week it was sam darnold with the no face mask you know call yeah. and then like they've got to do better. It's like, come on, raise the standard here with, with these refs. It's, it's getting a little ridiculous, but, um, also, but yeah, if you had Kyle Pitts, he had a good, good week for sure. It drives me nuts too, the like how much the refs can do to alter the game, but we can't question the refs. Like the players cannot question the refs at all. And they can't, the coaches can't challenge the refs calls, but I'm watching the game last night. We'll get to this game later, but I just wanted to bring this up because we're talking about it. But I'm watching the game last night, and there's an instance where um, Malik Neighbors catches the ball, and he stretches it out to the pylon. Well, the ref makes the decision to go review it, and then it's a, it was an official review is what they call it. There was no one, there was no coach challenge or anything. The official goes and reviews it as they're already getting ready to snap the ball and go again. And they decide that his knee was down in bounds and they give him a 10 second runoff. It's like, why can the referee make that decision? But the the coaches can't challenge the referees and like their calls. It's just really whack. Like, I just hate stuff like that. It's like, why do the referees have so much power over the game? It's stupid. Well, they can challenge some stuff, obviously, but they, they should be able to challenge anything, including missed calls. Yeah, like, I think that absolutely. they should be able to challenge it and say, you missed this call. You know, ball yeah, was moving. It right. Yeah, yeah. It's like they there should be nothing that coaches can't use that challenge flag on. Yep. Um, Kate Otten had a big day. Uh, nine receptions, eighty-one yards, two touchdowns. Awesome. Bucky Irving pretty much led uh, the the backfield. Nine carries, forty-four yards, and um, seven receptions for forty yards. Rashad White. Five receptions, 38 yards, and a touchdown. And uh, six carries for 29 yards. They've just got so many guys who can get it done on the ground. Um, but let's see. Did anybody... Jalen McMillan, not much. Sterling Shepard, not much. Trey Palmer, not much. So it was all Kate Otten this week. They'll keep ironing that out. Um, but Kate Otten is going to be a beast moving forward um, until Mike Evans is back. Uh, he should get the majority of the work. And then, um, yeah, Darnell Mooney, four receptions, 86 yards and a touchdown. Uh, yeah, Kirk Cousins had a good day. 276 and four touchdowns, no interceptions. But Buccaneers should have won this game because that Kyle Pitts touchdown should not have yeah, should have been called back. Um, all right. Next up. Uh, where are we at here? All right, Packers versus Jaguars. Man, this was a close one. The The Jags held in there a lot better than I thought they would. It sucks. Jordan Love went down early. 
uh, with the groin injury. Uh, that was my quarterback start of the week, or was that yours? Uh, I think that was yours. I think it was mine, yeah. Yeah, like we were all over him for fantasy, for daily fantasy. Like this is just like a huge matchup. Uh, it goes 14 for 22, 196 yards. He was getting rolling. You know, he he was moving the ball down the field, uh, throws a pick, but uh, yeah, hurts his, hurts his groin on a play. And um, I, I guess it wasn't like too early because uh, Malik Willis only – only went four, uh, four or five for fifty six yeah, in the in touchdown. Like the third quarter at some point. Yeah. Okay. So he wasn't having too crazy of a game. Josh Jacobs, twenty five carries, one hundred and twenty seven yards, two touchdowns. Um. Yeah, not a whole lot going on for the receivers in this game because obviously, when you make that switch to Malik, it's going to be RPO. Um, yeah. Brian Thomas Jr. got hurt in this game. That sucks. Uh, he he had a good game up until that injury, but uh, three receptions for 60 yards and a touchdown on four targets. Um, yeah, that, Evan Ingram. That touchdown got in, by had Evan a Ingram touch. was crazy. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it was super awesome. Athletic. How'd Tank look? Just leading the backfield. Um, so still no ETN, but Tank, 18 carries, 78 yards. Um, yeah, the the uh, the Jaguars did better in this game than I was expecting. Yeah. Kept it close. Had an opportunity to tie it up or win. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Colts versus Texans. This was a much closer game than I expected, too. Yeah. Do you know when Diggs got injured? Was it um, early on? I, it was in, like, the second I mean, he had five receptions for 81 yards, so yeah. nine targets. I think it was in the third quarter or fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken, because I had his uh, receptions for, like, a play, and uh, it was over five and a half, and I remember being like, oh, man, that sucks. But uh, I didn't expect him to – I mean, it was really weird how it happened, too, because he, like, went down next to the sideline and then just kind of scooted out, and then they were like, hopefully he's all right. But then, you know, he never came back, went into the tent, got carted off and all that stuff, so – unfortunate for him i mean it really sucks he's always really fun to watch and it really sucks for the texans who are just losing more and more players every week it feels like but you know they get healthy and then they lose someone else so it really sucks for them but joe mixon i mean dominated in this game for sure um, yeah which he tends to do he gets so many touches yeah um yeah 25 carries 102 yards and a touchdown um <clears throat> Jonathan Taylor had a good game, uh, 20 carries, 105 yards and a touchdown. Josh Downs, four receptions, 109 yards and a touchdown. This is things are about to get really good for for Josh Downs and and Michael Pittman. Yeah. With uh with our boy Flacco back at the helm. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Richardson again this year. No, I don't think that we should. Yeah. Personally, it's like no, you, you you need to And there's just so many big reporting names too that were like immediately all over this like pat mcavee was really critical of him you know obviously being the colts guy um his tweet said i'd never seen an nfl quarterback tap out while still being healthy until watching anthony richardson this is the qb of your franchise uh the message it sends is so loud and influential and that's the best way to put it i mean you you just sent the worst message about how much of a dog you got in you, how much you're willing to go win and put yourself on the line. Like, I mean, we've seen clips of Matthew Stafford blowing his shoulder out and still going back out on the field and winning the game for his team. So you just got to tough it up at the end of the day, no matter how tired you are, how hurt you are in that moment, you know, unless you're obviously in severe pain, but you tap out, you go to the sideline and you just act like a diva. Like that's never going to fly with the NFL ever. So no, no, so let's talk about the Saints versus the Chargers. Saints get destroyed 26 to 8. Ready to talk about Spencer Rattler? <laughs> That's why you wanted to skip to this yeah. one really quickly. Getting benched. Yeah. I mean, it's benched. Hainer didn't look any better, in my opinion. 12 of 24, 156 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Hainer comes in 9 of 17, 122. Um, a little bit better rating on the day. 
Um, Kamara, yeah, they just they couldn't get anything going. Uh, Chris Olave, uh, solid outing, no touchdowns, but uh, eight receptions, 107 yards. Um, this yeah. offense just has zero identity left to it. I mean, you know, like the quarterback situation is one thing. Like, I don't think either of them looked horrible. They're obviously not Derek Carr. They're not breaking the playbook open and getting these guys insane, you know, moon balls like Derek Carr. But, I mean, Chris Olave got involved plenty. But, uh, I mean, Bub Means, like Mason Tipton, these guys aren't stars. You know what I mean? These guys aren't Rashid Shaheed. Rashid Shaheed brought so much to this offense that people don't even realize. Like, the dude breaks open the playbook for people because – Teams can't load the box against Kamara when Rashid Shahid is out there because he's just going to burn you over the top. So it really sucked losing him on the year. So, I mean, we'll see when Derek Carr gets back, but I just don't see enough out of the Saints where I'm like, if he comes back, I don't think it's going to look too much better, honestly. I think it'll be better. I think a lot of these guys will, you know, have better games and it'll be closer, but their defense is too bad, man. I mean, it really is. Their defense is horrible right now. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, Lad McConkey, nice big breakout performance for him. Six of six for 111 yards and two touchdowns. The dude is a little monster. <laughs> you got a monster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JK Dobbins. Um, I expected more. He still got 17 carries, but, um, 57 yards in the touchdown. You're not mad at that. I just thought that he was going to be well over 100 yards in this on the, the ground. The Saints did make it a point, though, to try to stop the run, and they got burned for it because McConkey was doing whatever he wanted because they were loading the box. But it's because they've been like teams have been running all over them the last two weeks. Like, yeah. this is embarrassing. We got to at least address this. But yeah, yeah Dobbins had four catches uh, for 11 yards on seven targets. So, um, yeah, not not bad. Yeah. Not a bad day, but but yeah, they they need Carr back. I think Carr will help quite a bit. Um even the last time they had Carr back, um they didn't have uh Mason, I'm sorry, uh Taysom Hill um healthy, so if the two of them are back healthy, we'll see how that goes. It's got to be better than what we've been seeing, but yeah, I think this is a big situation with the defense just not looking good. Yeah. Um All right, Bills Seahawks. Bills controlled this whole thing. 31 to 10. James Cook, Monster Day. Um, Little Shakir, Monster Day. Nine receptions for 107 yards. Yeah. James Cook, though, 17 carries, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah. Like, that's pretty solid. Keon um, Coleman, five receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown. The one person who wasn't involved in this game at all was Amari Cooper. One reception for three yards. Two um, targets, yeah. Yeah, it was just really, uh, you know, they didn't need him too much in this game. And um, honestly, I think it's still a lot of him kind of breaking open the playbook and getting used to the way this offense works because uh, they were showing, like, one play where he was – they sailed the ball over his head. It, I think it was that second target, and he was supposed to run a different route than he did. So I think it's just playbook issues still. Um, he's – coming into a brand new offense and it's only his second week the first week he was on a short week so uh you know i think it's just still kind of breaking off the the mold with the new team because keon coleman's looking better and better every week so yeah they've got three solid wide receivers now so it could be you don't know week to week who's going to be the odd man out you know yeah, they have two good um, tight ends too dawson knox isn't going away he looks good yeah I was really expecting um I was really expecting King Cade to take a step this year. He still got in the end zone, you know, seven targets, but uh yeah, they love Dawson there. So they they they're implementing both of them. Kenneth Walker, really bad day. Nine carries, twelve yards, uh four receptions, thirty-three yards. So yeah, the the Buffalo defense was just shutting them down. They were really missing DK, I think. But yeah, hard to say. Um, Jackson Smith and Jigba, you know, target leader, seven targets. But it was like okay for full PPR. Nothing exciting. Six receptions, 69 yards. It was Uh, so weird to me that they brought in Mitchell Trubisky to run the ball on a couple plays. 
and he had three carries for negative three yards. <laughs> I don't know what they were trying to. They were trying to get a little cute with the playbook there, and uh, they're bringing him in to like try to run the ball, and it just looked so bad. But you know, yeah, not great. Trial by fire, I guess. All right, Panthers versus Broncos. Um, twenty-eight to fourteen. They started off like better than I expected. Uh, getting into the end zone, Carolina was up seven-zero through the first quarter. Uh, Bryce Young, twenty-four of thirty-seven, two twenty-four, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, Chuba, yeah, it's just it was. Jalen Coker looked good. Yeah, that dude, that dude, like, uh, he's a big, he's a big wide receiver. Um, I heard, I, I know a lot of analysts were high on him for like a deep sleeper coming into this year. I almost picked him up in dynasty early on. There were just some other players I liked better than him, but it's good to see them. Uh, I mean, honestly, this could be a really good, uh, opportunity, uh, since he's already getting involved and now Deontay has gone. Yeah. So my um, brother, um, and me were watching, uh, before the year starts, um, Steve Smith Jr. has this, uh, is it senior or junior? I can't remember. Steve Smith, either way. But um, he uh, he has uh, a show that he does where he talks about all the wide receivers coming out of the draft and he picks guys out. And he picked Jalen Coker as the best route runner. Um, he said that Jalen Coker is insanely slept on. He was like, this kid has got, I think, the best hands and the best routes coming out of the entire draft. He's like, I know there's a lot of big names who are coming from big colleges. This kid's coming from Holy Cross, so he's, you know, not really widely known. But uh man, he his routes looked very snappy yesterday for sure. So he looks yeah. like he could definitely be lethal. Yeah, Steve Smith was on him. Um Matt Harmon was in on him, and uh the dude from uh Fantasy Stock Exchange. All those guys were uh talking about snagging him as a, a deep sleeper for Dynasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, I, I think it just gets better from here now. Yeah. Um, Corlin Sutton was heavily involved, uh, eight receptions for a hundred yards. Troutman, uh, four receptions, 85 yards and a touchdown. Um, this offense yeah. is so crazy. It's like, you'd never know who's going to get it. Like, it's just Javante Williams had 17 carries for only 44 yards, and then Jaleel McLaughlin, eight carries for 47 yards. And it's like, now is it next week we're going to see Jaleel McLaughlin <laughs> get the majority of the snaps? It's like, I really don't know. Like, this offense is so different every week, and like, who's getting involved? It looks the same, but it's always like just completely different guys giving you production. So it's a little scary for fantasy implications to like yeah. start anyone. Sean of these Payton. Guys. Sean Payton's just having fun with it, and it's like kind of working for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's an easy matchup, obviously, but yeah. All right. Chiefs Raiders. Chiefs get it done 27 to 20. Uh, a lot closer than I was expecting. Yeah, I picked um, the Raiders to win this game. Um, that was my uh matchup of the week. I thought the Raiders were gonna get it done. It's always tough. They always, always give the Chiefs fits. I mean, they're just the thorn in their side. Um, you know, it's a really, really tough matchup every time just because of the, you know, toxicity involved with it. And you got Max Crosby hitting Mahomes all the time and stuff. It's just always a fun matchup to watch, but Travis Kelsey was definitely alive in this matchup. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Kelsey heavily involved, uh, 10 receptions, 90 yards and a touchdown. I saw like I I was bouncing around like I had a bunch of stuff going on Sunday so I um wasn't able to just sit down and focus on all the games like I like to do on Sundays but um I panned over to this game for a second and I saw Hopkins and I thought he looked good um uh, but yeah he didn't really do much three targets two receptions 29 yards um they'll continue to iron that out but um yeah it was all Travis Kelsey in this game Kareem Hunt, 21 carries, 59 yards and a touchdown. Did he get involved in the pass game? Just one reception for four yards. You want to hear something funny? Alexander Madison, 14 carries for 15 yards. <laughs> 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 one yard a carry. That is crazy. Yeah. Who got all the work done? So it was Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers and uh, DJ Turner who got into the end zone. 
Uh, yeah, Brock Bowers, five receptions, 58 yards. It would make sense that Spagnolo would focus on. I mean, it's easy for them to stop this run game, but yeah. I could see I could see Spagnolo kind of wanting to make sure that the you know Brock Bowers isn't going off. Yeah, two uh, two field goals, and I'm pretty sure they had a pick six, maybe. No, I'm not just sure. The, just the two field goals and the two touchdowns. All right. Bears versus Commanders. What a wild ending to this one. Commanders get it done. That was an incredible last play. Yeah. Um a lot of luck involved, but Jaden, he they said he was he he was uh, in the pocket for 12 point like nine seconds on that play. So great. Um yeah, got the lucky bounce. But still he laid that. You know, it's like, like we've said before with these Hail Marys, a lot of times guys get it not all the way even to the end zone. So the fact that he got it up there to where it could make its way into the end zone, like that was a really impressive throw. He continues to impress. That was his only passing touchdown. Uh, 21 of 38 for 326 yards and one touchdown. He's going to win the MVP, man. Maybe. Right, who else? We'll see. Um, I think Goff is actually looking really good. I think Baker's looking really good. Um, up until, you know, like a couple weeks ago, I thought Jordan Love was looking really good. But um I think Jaden has a good chance for sure. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not sold that it's like his to lose just yet. Uh even um Lamar Jackson, you know, like uh is is playing pretty solid. Um, but yeah, I mean of the this rookie matchup, we were excited to see. Uh, Jaden looks so ahead of schedule. Caleb, 10 of 24, 131 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, DeAndre Swift, great game, 18 carries, 129 yards, and a touchdown. Um, yeah, nothing really exciting on the pass catching side for uh, the Bears. Terry McLaurin, five receptions, 100, 125 yards. Zach Ertz, seven for 77. Uh, other than that, wasn't a whole lot going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, hats off to the commanders. Jeez, they look... <laughs> that is definitely the surprise of the year. And we've seen it with and without Jaden Daniels. So it's like, Jaden looks great, but... Um, this whole team is is executing, so good for them to go to six and two. All right, you still with me? Mm -hmm. Cowboys versus Forty Niners. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, yeah, this game was really annoying. I mean, I think Dak cost us this game, honestly, because uh, when you look at the the game in the grand scheme of things, like. We almost won this game to a degree. Like, we came back, and it was close. We should have never lost this game, I don't think. I mean, again, Alex Garendo comes in, just gashes our defense um, over and over and over, and uh, it was just brutal to watch. I mean, our defense is so bad. Like, Zimmerman is not going to have a job next year if this continues throughout the year, and either will McCarthy. The offense... Ezekiel Elliott led us in carries. Um, I don't think he looks too bad, honestly. Like, 10 carries, 34 yards, and a rushing touchdown against one of the better rushing defenses. Um, you know, him and Dalvin Cook are old. Like, it's it's not the best-case scenario. I don't think if you had Rico Dowdle in this game, we're in any better of a situation. CeeDee Lamb. It's just because, like, the running game isn't much of a, a factor with us. Like, it's not, it's a bad thing. It's a horrible thing. I think we need to be carrying the ball a lot more. Like 16 carries is not enough um, for running backs in this game where we weren't even down too much to start with. And then it just gets worse and worse. And I feel like the more you let Dak throw, the more mistakes he's going to make. Um, he had two really big costly interceptions, but the Niners, I mean, George Kittle couldn't stop him. Six, six receptions for 128 yards. He was just breaking us open over and over and over. Um, Honestly, the Cowboys just looked really mid in this entire game, to be honest. Like, there's not much defending I can do. Um, Dak really cost us a lot with those two interceptions, and uh, there could have been a third one. That would have been horrible, too. So, it, I don't know. We came close to coming back in this game, but you're just asking too much of, you know, the defense 
when they're already getting busted up constantly. So I don't even know, had, man. It's it's we're cooked this year. You had seven different 49ers run the ball and as a team average 6.2 yards a carry. Um, Ricky Pearsall, one carry, 39 yards. Brock Purdy, eight carries, 56 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, and Garendo. Um, obviously, that average number is going to be inflated quite a bit by uh, Ricky getting that one uh, for 39. Uh, but Jordan Mason, six carries, 18 yards. Um, this is interesting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Dak with the two picks. I disagree. I think as far as the running backs go, um, I think that Zeke looks like fine for his age. Like he didn't look like he cost them the game or anything, but I do think Dowdle still looks the best. We'll see how Dalvin Cook um, looks. I didn't get to catch a lot of this game, but I still think that Dowdle looks pretty decent, but I don't think that the the problem is his athleticism or his pass catching. I think that this is just a Mike McCarthy problem at the end of the day. Um, because I we know Dak's capable. We know CeeDee Lamb, who had a great game, right? 13 receptions, 146 yards, and two touchdowns. Like, what a massive day for CD. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about, about it. Like, you, uh, you're more dialed in with the Cowboys than I am, obviously. But um, I just think in a game like this, you can't throw two interceptions like that. Like, you... You're throwing two sure. interceptions against a team that's going to go capitalize off of them. And even though on, I think both of them, they didn't score off of them, uh, like with touchdowns, but they did get two field goals off of them. So we're, we keep getting in these situations where we're turning the ball over in the middle of the field or in enemy territory, and they're just getting easy points off of these stupid interceptions. And Dak's leading the NFL interceptions through the first couple weeks. And it's just like, and look what happens every game. We're trying to catch up by two scores and it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just like whether this is a McCarthy play calling problem or Dak problem, I don't know, but it's got to get addressed. Could be both. Yeah, yeah, it could be. And if Dak is going to throw the ball 40 times a game, like I don't, the run game it has to get going no matter who it is. Um, I mean, my, it just annoys me so bad. And I know that Jerry knows he's wrong, and that's why he's threatening to fire radio hosts for bringing it up. But, I mean, you cannot go into an offseason like that where the quarterback market is overflowing with talent and come up with Zeke, Dalvin Cook, and Dowdle. Like, you mean the running back market? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, or, dude, think about Braylon Allen who went in, what, like the fourth or fifth round? Yeah, or even Derrick Henry who uh, wanted to come here, but we decided yeah, didn't get to a call. pay Dak – a year in advance when he was just willing to play the season out without getting paid. Um, you know, the, I think it would have been a little mixed up because there was a lot of questions, but he was suited up ready to play that game and they paid him like an hour before the game started. Um, and now look at the situation we're in. He's leading the league in picks and stuff. And it's just really dumb. It's like, you could have went and gave Derek Henry a bag, waited till next year, gave Dak either a max contract or gave him the, um, like the luxury tag and gave him like a ton of money and tried to keep him happy that way and made him play for another deal. But this is just ridiculous. I mean, the Cowboys have so many issues and like for, you know, me, it's just like, well, here we go. Another year of, you know, being mid, I guess, because it's in this division with the Eagles, the way the Eagles are looking like, good luck, dude. Like we, we've got to figure something out or else they're going to just run right through us. <laughs> like, if we get yeah. in the playoffs right now, if we're lucky to, we're not going to get out of that first round again. Like I can promise you that. Well, I agree. You could have went and gotten Derrick Henry, but even then, if you wanted to pay Dak, you could have gotten Braylon Allen in the draft yeah. who looks amazing. Like, and he's young and it's like, that would have been your future. Like the, it's at, just at this point, I'm just hoping we lose enough games to somehow have a chance at Ashton Genty. That would be, best case scenario but i mean look listen to our schedule like we have the falcons next week eagles texans commanders giants Bengals. then we get the panthers but then it's the bucks eagles commanders again like we could lose another four games right now <laughs> like this is ridiculous you don't think joe mixon is not going to run through our face next week like this is it's crazy <laughs> it's true yeah 
Joe Mixon's going to eat next week, especially with Diggs out now. Yeah. Um, all right. So Giants versus Steelers for Monday Night Football. Um, Surprisingly fun game. Yeah, closer than I was expecting. Um, Russell Wilson looks so good. Yeah. Russ is they, good. He could have had a much – he is, and uh, he's just throwing beautiful balls, like like – perfect spirals coming right down in the perfect spot for these receivers, like uh, managing this offense well. Uh, but yeah, he he could have had a much bigger game. Like there was a multiple times where uh, Pickens could have had a touchdown or two. Yeah, um, dude, Calvin Austin looks so good with Russ. Like this is the Calvin Austin we knew that existed, but just wasn't being utilized. But holy crap, he looks good. He does. Um and uh, Najee Harris uh, looked great again yeah. for the third week in a row. 19 carries, 114 yards. Um, yeah, Warren looked good too. Nine for 46, five yards a carry. Yeah. I mean, it was unfortunate. Obviously, Russ had that fumble. Um, that was that was rough, yeah. didn't he? I think, yeah, on one of those carries. Uh, but didn't end up costing them the game. But uh, I think the fantasy news of this game is Tyrone Tracy is clearly the lead back now. Like, yeah, he got a concussion, which sucks. But yeah, but twenty when he carries, one hundred and forty-five, and a and a touch though. If he's doing that good on the ground, averaging seven point three a carry against the Steelers, and yeah. we know what he's capable of doing through the air, um, super exciting. Yeah, for fantasy fantasy owners like yourself. Oh yeah, who have him in dynasty? Like you got to be pumped for sure. Did you see that? Uh, this is just like a side note, but that one idiot O lineman for the Giants who was like, "I want to be on an island with T.J. Watt," so they let him go one on one for six plays, and in three of those plays, he gave up a sack, a strip sack fumble, and um, like another almost potential sack where he Daniel Jones got out of the pocket and he got tripped up by T.J. Watt. Trying to run away, but I'm like, how, why would you ever call out TJ Watt? Like, this guy is probably one of the best defensive linemen we've ever seen. Like, defensive end for sure. But I mean, the dude is going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, this guy is. Yeah. There's a reason he's doubled on 98 percent of the plays. <laughs> like, the, yeah, he's and a still freak. getting through. <laughs> like, yeah. Still getting you know strip sacks and sacks and like. Yeah. Um. Definitely in high contention for defensive player of the year, like every year that he plays. Yep. Um, you love to see someone like him healthy and oh, just yeah. uh, an absolute disruptor. Uh, as far as receiving goes, yeah, they didn't really get a whole lot going uh, on the Giants side. Pickens, four receptions, 74 yards. Again, could have had a touchdown. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's just... Spreading it around. Van Jefferson, four receptions, 62 yards. Calvin Austin with that awesome touchdown. Beautiful ball. Um, and a punt return touchdown. That was crazy. Ran out oh, Calvin got yards. a punt return? Yeah. It was pretty wild. He took off, and right after that punt return, the next possession they had the ball, he scored on offense, too, so he had a big game. That's awesome, man. Things are looking really bright like the future looks bright for the Steelers team right now yep. um all right let's get into some some sleeper sweet um we'll talk about waiver wire and uh I'm just gonna open up sleeper real quick also Mike Look Tomlin is 26 and 0 in Monday Night Football <laughs> that's so crazy dude dude it's such a stud yeah absolutely they're like just year after year always Making a push. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. All right. So Parker Washington is on the top of the board. <clears throat> I think that's obviously because of Brian Thomas Jr. being yeah. injured, but. Um, he is not my top target this week. Um, Cedric Tillman, if he's available, that is my personal top target. Um, he's just looked great ever since, uh, 
ever since uh, Amari Cooper left. He's looking like the waiver wire steal of 2024. If you already snagged him, good for you. If he's out there, this is a bag drop for sure. Um, first two games without Amari, he goes uh, 12 targets in game one, eight receptions, 81 yards. And then here against Baltimore, uh, nine targets, seven receptions, 99 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, and now we've got Jameis Winston. So this guy is clearly the wide receiver one for this team. And he looks great. He looks ready to go. So I would go snag him. Um, yeah, absolutely. That is def- he looks definitely a, a bag drop. If you need a quarterback, Joe Flacco, I think is uh, worthy to be on like squads everywhere, personally. Um, he's going to be very competent. Uh, he's probably, let's see, let's see what he's done in his starts. Yeah, so uh, week five against Jacksonville, uh, 33 of 44 for 359 and three touchdowns, 35 fantasy points. I think this uh, this league I'm looking at is six point touchdowns, but um, yeah, three games played. He's went for 19 fantasy points, 35 and 18. Like this is a this is a guy that uh, I mean, this dude took me to the championship last year. Yeah. So if he's if he's on your team, like he's a solid starter, or you know, or if he's on your waiver wire. I'm not saying go drop the bag, but if you need help at quarterback, like don't be, uh, don't hesitate on Flacco because of the situation and his age. Um, don't drop a bag on him, but yeah, he like sweating in the championship game against Z man. I was like, dude, Flacco could drop 40 on my head. <laughs> yeah, dude, he can, he can do that. He is a, he, he's loving life too, because he's already been through it. He's already got a championship. He's, you know, uh, these guys at this age are just loving their opportunities and they can be calm out there and just have fun with it. Um, so he's got nothing to prove. He's not trying to win a job, you know? So like, um, I love it. Uh, Keon Coleman is trending. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, things have been turning up the last two weeks. Um, four receptions in week seven, um, 125 yards. And then, Week eight against the Seahawks, five receptions, seventy yards, and a touchdown. I can't believe he's that starting this to week click. He has three hundred thirty thousand ads in Dynasty. <laughs> like how, how does the Dynasty League not have Keon Coleman added? That's so crazy. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, are you sure you're on Dynasty? Yeah, he's ninety. That must just be the... now, but like three hundred thirty eight thousand ads this week is nuts. That's that's got to be all ads then, because mine's showing on redraft three hundred thirty nine thousand, but it's showing me sixty four percent owned. Okay, yeah, so it's in a redraft in dynasty. So it's got to be like the redraft, probably uh, the whole total numbers. Um, let's see. Zach Ertz is trending. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you need a tight end, like uh, dude's yeah. been eating and. I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. Like he's super solid for tight ends this this year are really hit or miss. So like getting a guy who's consistently giving you eight to ten points is plenty. Um and he has potential to have big weeks because he is athletic. So um definitely a guy you want. I mean so eleven targets, seven receptions, solid performance. Yeah. Uh Josh Downs. Absolutely. Like he is about to go nuclear with Joe Flacco. Um, if we take a look at those weeks, what weeks did we say for Flacco? Was it four through eight? Yeah. Um, when Flacco was playing those games, Josh Downs went for 22 fantasy points, uh, full PPR, uh, 22 fantasy points, uh, 15.9 fantasy points and 19.5 fantasy points. And then, um, uh, he's just, he's base. he's their wide receiver one. He's a gadget guy. He's yep. fast. He's he plays way bigger than his size. Super young, twenty three. Like yeah, for Dynasty, Dynasty especially. Gold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, it's impressive too because when he got drafted, I'm sitting here thinking like, you know, young, undersized, going to join Michael Pittman, you know, uh, and it's just like I didn't see a path to him becoming the wide receiver one on the team, yeah. but he went and got it. So good for him. Kind of like a Calvin Austin, actually. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Calvin Austin, like what's another good comp for him? Cause he's really like, um, it's also kind of like a Demario Douglas, you know, type of like, just really fidgety out there. Yeah. You I know? think he like, looks like hard a, to tackle. a lot like Zay Flowers to me, where it's like very quick, spazzy type movements where he's just, you know, trying to do the most all the time. And that's the guys yeah. who are going to go out and make massive plays. So yeah, that's, that's a good comp. Yeah. Cause he's also cool. so, like yeah. five, eight undersized guy. So yeah, if he's available, uh, he's going to be, he's going to be great moving forward. All right, so John Mechie is trending. So it must have been pretty late in the game because I didn't I didn't see when Diggs went out. Um, but he is looking kind of like I mean he's he's the next man up for sure. He only played twenty eight percent of snaps, uh, had four targets, three receptions uh, for twenty nine yards. So just opportunity alone. Like, yeah, I get, I get it. Why, why he's trending a little bit. Um, he's not going to be a one for one Diggs replacement, but yeah, Diggs went down in the third <coughs> beginning of the third quarter. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's been with the team for a little while. He's got rapport, you know, already knows the offense and they're going to have to have him step up. So, um, I get that. Elijah Moore. Um, again, yeah, uh, I would much rather have Tillman between these two, but he got 12 targets, eight receptions, 85 yards. I think both of these guys can eat with Jameis. Like Jameis is going to really bring this thing to life. Um, and that was uh, against the Ravens who are a pass funnel. I get it, but this is just Jameis is going to be slinging it every single week. Yeah. So I would go get him as well. For sure. Calvin Austin on a bye week, but especially for dynasty. Like, I think he's worth owning uh, now that we got Russ. Yeah. I think he's going to get better and better. And Russ is already targeting him more and he's more involved in the game plan. I think he even had a carry potentially. Um, so they, they know what kind of a weapon they have in this guy. And I think Tomlin is really starting to realize that now, um, you know, He's just another flashy tool in this offense. I mean, some of these catches these guys were making last night. I don't know if you saw that one of Pickens on the sideline where he just went up and took it from that guy. And uh, I think so. And he was just dancing around. Like, the moves these guys are putting on people, it even had Tomlin just laughing because he was just like, my God, like, these guys are insane. So it's it's fun. It's a definitely an exciting time for you Steelers fans, no doubt. Absolutely. Kate Otten is uh is trending yes if kate otten is available in your league this is yeah dump it all up there <laughs> this is up there with tillman like if you need a tight end swing for kate otten because this is going to be great the rest of the way we yeah. have back-to-back -back weeks 10 targets you know against baltimore eight receptions for 100 yards um and then uh he could this be the past tight week, end one Really? Yeah, nine receptions, 81 yards, two touchdowns. Like he is going to be like the number one target on this offense moving forward until Mike Williams gets back. We know uh, it's what, well, like, does Godwin have a chance to come back this year? No, I know he's on IR. Yeah, no, he's done. He, uh, his ankle was like completely broke. So, okay. Well, if that's the case, yeah. I mean, if you need a tight end, this is a rare opportunity to get one if he's available. So, um, usually it's like guys with a little bit of upside. Yeah. This guy could be top three, the rest of the way, top five for sure. Um, Calvin Ridley. <clears throat> yeah. Some of these are going to be obvious. I mean, yeah. Calvin Ridley, if he's available, go get him. Yeah. Um, that's a guy you that was just, to, no matter what, you should never drop him. Yeah. Jacoby Myers is starting to put things together, isn't he? Let's see. He just came back. So yeah, he, uh, seven targets for six receptions and a touchdown. He's always going to be, I think the number one on the team. He just looks the best, you know, Trey Tucker yeah. is not bad, but he definitely doesn't have the experience and the route running capabilities that Jacoby Myers has. No matter what team Jacoby's on, he always looks good. Like when he was with the Patriots, he was amazing. And uh, he was like the only, even Julian Edelman said like, I don't know why we, the Patriots went and traded away Jacoby Myers. He was the best receiver on their team. 
And, uh, you know, no matter where he goes, he's either going to be the number one or he's going to be a solid number two. So um, Jacoby Myers, I would always keep rostered if you have him in Dynasty for sure. Yeah, definitely the wide receiver one. Obviously, Brock is going to be the the tar- the number one target yeah. most weeks. Um, yeah, Lad McConkey. Wow, this dude's actually sitting on waiver wires. 79% owned. Like, yeah, this guy shouldn't have been on the waiver wire. Yeah, if he happens to be available. <laughs> yeah, if he happens to be available in your redraft leagues, like, go get him. Like, that's also a fab dump. Yep. Uh, that's why I was saying at the top of the show, this is a great week for waivers, uh, especially for redraft. Dynasty, a lot of these guys are probably already taken. Yeah. Tyrone Tracy, 64% owned. I kind of get it for redraft um because i mean like now you need to get him but that's why we were telling you weeks ago go get this guy because it's just a matter of time but um i kind of get it why people maybe uh he he probably got dropped last week against philly when uh, he only had the uh the six carries for 23 yards they're probably like, okay yeah i'm not gonna do this but if he's available yeah you need to go get him yeah, he's got Washington and then Carolina. I honestly and then, think uh, last week against Philly was like limit testing because Singletary only had five carries too. So I think they were just seeing like who looked better, and I think now they're just all in on Tracy. Obviously, he's got a concussion now, so he'll be out a week or two. But uh, when he comes back, yeah, he's a green light. Every yeah, week good flex. schedule moving forward. Um. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anyone else that you shouldn't already know. Like, I mean, if Puka Nakua, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if he's available, that's probably your church league or something. <laughs> or like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like uh, we're eight man leagues or something, eight team leagues. Um, Westbrook Akine, uh, he didn't really, it's like, whatever. I'm, I'm not too interested. Two receptions. For 39 yards and a touchdown, that's just going to be the Calvin Ridley show. Uh, you could maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, if it's anything like this past week, um, which they'll they'll want to spread the ball out more, obviously. So maybe there's a little bit of upside there, but he's not really on my radar. Yeah. No. All right. Well. Oh yeah, Jalen Coker. Yeah, go get him. Could probably... Dynasty for sure. Yeah, Dynasty and Redraft, uh, he's worth a stash because I think that um, with uh, Deontay leaving, uh, he's going to get more snaps. So he had a solid outing, four receptions, 78 yards, and a touchdown. So this guy is um, worth rostering for sure. Yep. Um, Yeah, so that covers it. Uh, If there's anybody that we skipped over that you want to know about, just leave us a comment and we'll uh, get back to you in the comment section. But uh, that's going to cover everything for today. We appreciate you guys tuning in. um, And uh, we will catch you in the next video. Good luck, guys.